the word of God has unlimited abilities in it. The word of God has unlimited abilities in it. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. The word has an ability to sustain man. What it means is the word has an ability to sustain the spirit of man. Because the real man is in spirit. So, your spirit cannot live by bread. Your body survives by bread. And what Jesus says, you can't live by bread alone. You can't live by the food that you eat alone. But by every word. That is, your spirit should be fed with the word of God. You see, when God created man in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Here, we see God introducing his spirit into the man that he had formed from the dust of the earth. By simply breathing into his nostrils, he introduced his spirit into the body of man that he has formed. And this also reveals to us that the body of man is from the earth. And it can only be nourished by what comes from the earth. The bread comes from the earth. That's what Jesus meant. The bread comes from the earth. It can nourish the body. But the spirit of man comes from God. And can only be nourished by the word of God. So we're looking at the abilities of the word of God. The abilities of the word of God. The spirit of man is from God. Who put him inside man? God put his spirit inside man. For man to live the life of God on earth. Therefore the spirit of man will return to God when his end is come. And the body of man will return to the dust when his end comes. The spirit of man, therefore, can only be sustained by the bread that came from heaven. That is the word of God that's from heaven. That is what can sustain your spirit, the spirit of man. This is what Jesus means when he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Man, the spirit of man can only be sustained by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. That's Proverbs chapter 4, from verse 20 to 22. For they are life. The word of God is life to our spirit. Then it becomes life to our soul and to our body. There is a level of the word of God that you take. Your body begins to get transformed. You see, 
Moses stayed with God, separating himself from the people, and stayed with God for 40 days and 40 nights. And when he returns, you see the word of God begins to radiate even in his body. His face was glowing with the glory of the Lord. Say, for they are alive unto those that find them, and health to all the flesh. So the word of God is life to those who can lay hold on the word. The word of God is life. It is life only to those who find them. It is health. It is medicine to all their flesh. See, the word of God is medicine to all our flesh. I must say this to you for several years. For several years, I have not been to the hospital. I'm sustained by the word. You can be sustained by the word of God. There is such a thing as divine health. There is such a thing as divine health is encapsulated in the word of God. I say it again. Divine health is encapsulated in the word of God. If you can open up the word, you will find divine health inside there. The key, therefore, is finding the word for your situation. And applying it by speaking it to that situation. The word of God has healing abilities available in it. Until the word is enforced, an encounter is not in sight. It, it is the spirit of quickness. The flesh profited nothing. So stop living on the flesh. Stop trusting in flesh. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John chapter 6 and verse 63. The word of God spoken is spirit and is life. It's life. It carries in it the life of God. The life that is from above. The life that is beyond earthly restrictions is encapsulated. By the word in the word of God. For the word of God to produce what you want, you must speak it. You must command. You must say the word out on that situation. It is a law. The word must be spoken to produce an encounter. You can keep quiet and expect the word to produce an encounter in your life. The spoken word is what produces an encounter. Until you speak the word of God, nothing happens. Jesus points out two attributes of the word. He says they are spirit and they are life. Though you do not see the word, but you see and feel the result and the influences of the word of God. That is why the word is spirit. You see the result and the influence of the word. For example, Jesus couldn't find fruit in that tree. And he spoke the word. The spirit in the word of God went forth and did exactly what Jesus proclaimed. In like manner, when we proclaim the word of God over situations, it goes forth and accomplishes that that we have spoken. It says they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is spiritual. They must be understood spiritually. 
and they must not be understood literally. The word of God must be spiritually discerned. They are life. The life of God is wrapped up in the word of God. The word of God carries the life of God. The word of God carries the life of God. The more we meditate on the word of God, the more it impacts our spirit with the life and the nature of God. You see, that is why one of the first things God began to speak to Joshua is that he shouldn't let go of the word, but to keep his eyes on the word, to keep speaking the word, to keep declaring the word, to keep believing the word, to keep the word in his heart. And God told him to teach the children also, to teach all his children the word of God, to teach also. Abraham says, speaking, says, he will teach his children the word of the Lord because there is mystery in understanding the word of God. He says he should speak the word, speaking the word, declaring the word over situation. He taught them the mystery of the word. There is life in the word of God. If we can study the word of God and put the word in our heart, it will destroy any form of diseases in our bodies. The Bible says he sent forth his word and heals us and delivers us from our destructions. You see, God's word is a solution to every challenge in your life. God's word is a solution to every challenge in your life. God's word is the strength of your life. When we study the word of God, we feed our spirit literally. And when our spirit is fed, our spirit is strengthened, just like when you eat physical food. Your body is strengthened and refreshed. When you feed your spirit with the word of God, your spirit is strengthened. To be without the word and to live without the word is very dangerous. To be without the word of God and to live without the word of God is so dangerous. Matthew 12 and verse 43 to 45 tells us, that unclean spirits and demonic forces are searching for people who are empty of the word of God to inhabit them. You see, they are searching for hearts that are empty of the word. When your heart is empty of the word of God, when evil forces come, they find it empty. There is no word for you to project and stop them. There is no word for you to project and resist them. And so they find an easy way into you. But if you take in some of the word of God, if you can take in some of the word of the Lord, when they come, they see the word in you. He said, then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he, he is calm, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than he himself. And they enter in and dwell there. Why? Because that house is empty. Remember, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He says, your temple is empty. That's why demons can come. And stay there. If you can just get the word of God into your spirit today, then you stay demons out of your domain. He said, and the last stage of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation who will not listen to the word of God, who will not take the word of God in their hearts. The key to encounter 
the word of God is to allow his word to enter into our hearts. We allow the word of God to enter into our spirit by meditating on the word of God. That is key. If you will allow the word of God to enter into your spirit today, demons can never find a house in you. Evil forces can never find a home in you. You see, Evil thoughts, wicked thoughts, can never find a place in you. Why? Because when you have the word of God in you, you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible says the entrance of the word of God gives us light. Psalms 119 and verse 130. The entrance of the word into your heart, into your spirit, giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. You see? Note, it is not the word, but it's the entrance of the word. If you allow the word to enter, it's not only for us to stop at listening to the word of the Lord. But we must allow the word of God to enter into our heart. Just like that good soil, the word fell into the good heart. And the good heart preserved that word and observed the word and nurtured the word and did not cast the word away. Hallelujah. The word of God has in it abilities to prevent you from dying on timely death. The word of God has in it ability to keep you strong, hale, and hearty. The word of God has in it the ability to do anything. All things are possible by the word of the Lord. All things are possible through the word of the Lord. Therefore, we must allow the word of God to enter into our hearts. Because the entrance of the word gives us light. It never leaves our heart empty. The word of God is able to the abilities of the word. Number one ability of the word, the word of God when received and meditated upon makes us prosper, makes us become productive and makes us to begin to be fruitful. The word of God when received and meditated upon makes a man to become prosperous productive and fruitful we'll look at two scriptures in regards to this we'll first read from isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10 isaiah 55 and verse 10 and 11 for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and to bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The word of God has an ability to make us begin to bear fruit. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud. The rain waters the earth and makes it to bring forth and to bud. And it makes it to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You see, the word of God, it says, so shall my word be 
the word of God makes our earth to begin to bring forth and to board and begins to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the word of God makes us to be fruitful in everything and everywhere. If you are not fruitful, and if you've not been prosperous, or you are not still prospering or happy in life, I recommend you to give yourself to the word of God. I recommend you today, just like Paul recommended the word of God to his people. I recommend you today, let the word continually enter into your heart. He says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is that man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Blessed is that man whose delight is in the word of the Lord. Blessed is that man who will delight in the word and meditate on the word. And in his law does he meditate day and night. In his word does he ponder. In his word does he study. In his word does he proclaim. In his word does he roar. See, when we ponder on the word and we study the word and we proclaim the word by speaking the word of God, by making decrees and we roar the word of the Lord. He says, we are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in our season. Our leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever we do shall prosper. You see, prosperity begins at the word. Prosperity begins at the word. At the word, at the word we put in our heart. At the word we meditate. At the word we speak out. At the word we understand. At the word we believe. At the word we declare. At the word we speak boldly. Prosperity begins there. It says, the man who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates day and night in the law of the Lord is like a tree that's planted. It's like a tree that's planted. You know what that means? Planted by the rivers of water. This man is like a tree that's planted. This man who delights in the word of the Lord is like a tree that's planted. You know what it means to be planted? To be planted is not like one that just grew from the ground. It's not an accidental thing. We are like trees that are planted by the rivers of water. We have a free flow of source supplying our every need. Whenever a man wants to make a decision to plant, he looks out for what? For the best soil and a good place. Hmm. A good place where that tree will grow well and do well. He says, everyone that meditates on the world is like a man, is like a tree that's planted by rivers of water. God has looked out for us, a good place. The world is a place where if we are planted in the world, we remain unshakable, unmovable. Situations begin to answer to us. Why? Because we are planted in the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord is powerful. We are planted in the midst of power. We are planted in the garden of power. He says, our delight is in the word. Our delight must be in the word of the Lord. You see, it means that you find joy in studying and doing 
the law of the Lord. You find joy in observing the word. You find joy in restraining yourself from the world. You find joy in living by the word of God. So we should love the word of God and receive it with gladness. David says, I rejoice at thy word as one that found a great spoil. I rejoice at thy word like one who has found a great spoil. Psalms 119 and verse 162. You see, nobody plants a tree. For example, an orange tree, a pear tree, and neglects it. Everyone that plants a tree wants to take care of it. He said, we are like a tree that's planted by rivers of water, and our leaves will never wither. By the rivers of water, always green and flourishing, via divine supplies and divine support, we are by the rivers. Leko pare gabodon darukata. We are by the rivers. A place of unending supply and unending support. Unending supply of health. Unending supply of finances. Unending supply of divine protection. Unending supplies of our needs. All you will ever need. If you can lay hold on the word of God. It says the word of God prevails. Zora de Gabada. He bringeth forth fruit in his season. He bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Is your season. In the name of Jesus. We bring forth our fruit in our season. So fruit is surely expected in our lives. We are fruitful. You begin to declare, I am fruitful. Everywhere I turn, I am fruitful. I bear precious seed. I bear fruit. It is the right time. For me to bear fruit. It is my time. It is my season. His leaf also shall not wither. This man that takes delight in the word of the Lord. His leaf shall not wither. His leaf shall not wither. No part of you is allowed to suffer. No part of you is allowed to suffer pain. To suffer dryness. To suffer unfruitfulness. His leaf shall not wither. Every part of you is expected to glow. Every part of you is expected to blossom. Your business to blossom. Your finances to blossom. Your health to blossom. There's all around prosperity for he who will lay hold on the word of God. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It means fruitfulness is our birthright. Fruitfulness is our friend. Fruitfulness is our new address and our new location. He is always healthy and fruitful. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. All the blessings starts from developing the right attitude for the word of God. We must learn to embrace the word. We must let the word of God enter into our heart, into our spirit. Everything we will ever need is in the word of God. We should never let go of the word. We should read the word to our children. We should memorize the word of God and put it in our heart. We should put the word of God inside our heart. We don't memorize it because we want to be braggadocious about it. No, 
We memorize the word of God because we know there is power in the word of God. Then that word that we've, we've memorized, we take the word with us. Hosea said, take the word with you and return to the Lord. So we take the word everywhere we go. We take the word with us and we turn to God for a defense. Any situation we face, we hear the word of God as a banner held above our head. That is the protection. That is divine protection. That is divine healing. That is divine capsules. The word of God is a proof of fruitfulness in our life. The word is able to make us to be fruitful in everything that we do. The word of God has an innate ability in it. It says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. The word of God is prevalent. The word of God cannot be overtaken. The word of God is sure. The word of God is powerful. There is prevailing power in the word of God. To prevail is to emerge victorious. To prevail in the presence of challenging situation is to overcome such situation by the word of God. To prevail is to become successful in the face of opposition. To prevail is to be above restriction and limitations. It says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevail. Acts chapter 19 and verse 20. The word of God is the antidote for every strange and unexpected odd appearances on your way of every breakthrough. God has destined you to encounter breakthroughs, to encounter blessings. The word of God must be with you. You keep on speaking the word of God. You keep on speaking the word of God. The word of God cannot fail. He said, for by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Psalms 18 and verse 29. When you speak the word of God in prayer, nothing can resist it. Nothing can stop its manifestation. When you speak the word of God every day over your life, over your family, over your brothers, over your sisters, over your wife, over your husband, when you speak the word of God, nothing can hinder it. He said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the devising asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrows, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hallelujah. The word of God is alive and active. The word of God is alive and active. There is nothing hidden from the word. The word of God is active even in areas where your physical eyes cannot reach. The word of God will get there. The word of God will penetrate there and bring solution there. The voice of the Lord make her the hills of carve. You see, the voice of the Lord is the word of God. It says the voice of the Lord make her the hands to carve and discover the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. Psalms 29 and verse 9. The voice of the Lord make her the hymns to come. The word is so powerful. The word has no equal. The word is a weapon that God has given to you and I. From today, you should begin to engage the power in the word of the Lord. Because where the word of a king is, there is power. Therefore, you need to engage the word of the Lord. To enforce your kingship on earth, you need to engage the word of the Lord. It's a word, the word of the king is there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? 
Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. Therefore, the voice of the word of God in you make things to happen. The voice of the word of God in you changes situation. The voice of the word of God in you causes miracles to occur. You must let the voice of the word in you to be heard by the circumstances, by the situations, by the sickness, by that disease, by that challenging situation. Let the voice of the word of God in you be heard. When the angel came to Daniel, he said, I have come for thy words. They are not coming for any other thing. They come for the voice of the word of God in our lips. And finally, I gave you this bonus. Psalms 103 and verse 20. It says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. When we speak the word of God out in prayer, we will make declarations by the word of the Lord that we speak. He dispatches the angels to bring the answers. Remember, the angel said, Since you began to pray, O Daniel, Almighty God has sent me with your answer that I was held back. By the prince of Persia. So when we begin to pray, the angels hearken to the voice of the word of God that we are declaring. Then they are dispatched for that situation. Hallelujah. The word of God is so powerful. The abilities of the word is enormous. God has given us the word of God. Apostle Paul says, I commend you to the word of God. I commend you, brethren, to the word of God. The word of his grace is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them who are sanctified. The word is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. The word is able to give you a blessing in your health. The word is able to give you a blessing of peace. The word is able to give you a blessing of breakthroughs. The word is able to take you up from the dungeon and set you in place with the princes of the earth. Hallelujah. Just give him praise. Adore him. Magnify him. Give him praise. Declare in the name of Jesus that you live in the word of God. You treasure the word. You speak the word. The power of the word is resident inside you, in your lips, in your mouth, in the name of Jesus. Just give him praise. Adore him in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.